Chapter four, we're going to be looking at the building blocks of matter, which is atoms. And atoms are actually built up of some atomic particles. And we're going to look at where they're found, uh, the discovery of those subatomic particles, the characteristics of them. We'll also be talking about Bohr's model of the atom and where we find electrons inside the atom. Talk about atomic symbols and how we use those. And we're going to look a little bit closer in depth at the periodic table, at the history and how it was developed, also how it was used to predict missing elements in the past, and then what those different regions in the periodic table mean. So subatomic means smaller than the atom. So it's the particles that make up each atom. And the subatomic particles, two of those are found in the nucleus. This is the very center of the atom, which contains the protons and the neutrons. And it's a very dense core. It's where most, nearly all of the mass of the atom is found. And we record that mass as atomic mass units. And those atomic mass units they're a relative unit, so they're compared to each other. We say that a proton is one atomic mass unit and a neutron is one atomic mass unit. Now they do have masses in grams. They're just very, very tiny, and it's more reasonable to talk about them as atomic mass units. So the protons and the neutrons are located in the nucleus of the atom. The protons have a positive one charge. We usually represent them with a plus sign. And that helps to tell us what type of element that atom is. If we change the number of protons, we change the type of element that it is. And again, we have the actual mass in grams but it's much easier to refer to it as one atomic mass unit. Now neutrons, they have no charge, they're neutral. They also have one atomic mass unit um, for their mass. They're located in the nucleus. They have no charge, so we usually represent them with a zero or a blank sphere in the nucleus. And electrons, they occupy the empty space around the nucleus. So they're found in the orbitals. They are much, have much less mass than the protons or the neutrons. And so we typically say that they have no mass. It's not significant compared to the protons and neutrons. Electrons are a negative one charge and we represent them with a minus sign. The size that we draw electrons are is much smaller than the protons or the neutrons. So let's start with electrons. We said they're negatively charged particles. They're found in the orbitals, so in the empty space that surrounds the nucleus, and they have essentially no mass. So they're represented by the green spheres orbiting our nucleus. They were discovered by J.J. Thompson back in 1897. He was doing an experiment. If you've ever seen an old um, tube TV, the ones that are really thick, essentially he was using an old tube TV, but this is before they used this technology in TVs, but it's a cathode ray tube. So they would shoot particles through an electric field, and he found that the particles that came out were attracted towards a positively charged metal plate. So it means that they were negatively charged because they were attracted towards the positive. So because matter is neutral, this means that there also had to be positive charge inside the atoms as well. So we had negatively charged electrons, 
and we also had some sort of positive charge. So he proposed, J.J. Thompson proposed, a plum pudding model, model of the atom. So he knew there were negative charges and they had to be an opposing positive charge. And so he proposed uh, that they were just mingled together similar to plum pudding. If you're unfamiliar with plum pudding, you could think about it like the blueberry muffin model of an atom where our electrons are the blueberries floating around in the rest of the muffin. So the positive charges that he proposed were later to be, later to be determined to be protons. They're positively charged particles. They're found in the nucleus and they have a mass of one atomic mass unit. So they are the plus signs that we see in the center of our atom. They were discovered by Ernest Rutherford in 1912, so a few years later. He used positively charged alpha particles, so they're much larger and more massive than electrons, and he was aiming them at a very thin piece of gold foil. What he found was that most of the time the alpha particles would go straight through the gold foil and be detected on the back side of the foil. Sometimes they would be diverted a little bit through the gold foil and sometimes they would bounce straight back at the source. And so what this means is that when they went straight through, it means that the atom is mostly empty space. When they glanced off, it said that it means that the nucleus is positively charged and there it's repelling those positive alpha particles. And when it comes straight back at the source, that means that it came very close to the nucleus and it bounced off the nucleus and reflected back, meaning that most of the mass is in the very center part of our atoms. So protons help us identify what type of element the, the atom is. So it's determined by the number of protons. Rutherford predicted the nuclear model. So there's a nucleus at the center made of positive protons and negative electrons in the empty space around. This leads to the atomic number, which we represent with the letter Z, and it tells us the number of protons in an atom. The atomic number is the number in the top portion of the boxes of the periodic table. It's a whole number. Neutrons are neutral particles found in the nucleus and they have a mass of about one atomic mass unit. We usually represent them with a zero or just a blank sphere in the nucleus. They were discovered by James Chadwick in 1932. And this, the way that they were found was because the mass of atoms was roughly about twice as large as what was predicted by having just protons in the atom and couldn't explain it with just protons and electrons and so it was determined that there must be another particle with no charge in the nucleus and these were determined to be neutrons and so now we have protons and neutrons in the nucleus with electrons in the space around it in the orbitals. Okay, so fill in your chart predicting what the characteristics of each subatomic particle are. Pause the video, fill it in. The charge for a proton is plus one, neutrons are zero, electrons are negative one. Relative mass for proton 
is one atomic mass unit. Neutrons are one, electrons are essentially zero. The actual mass in grams, the protons and neutrons are about the same, electrons are significantly less. And we find protons and neutrons in the nucleus, electrons are in the orbitals in the empty space around. When we change the number of protons, that changes the type of element that is being represented. If we change the number of neutrons, it changes to a different isotope. And if we change the electrons, that changes the charge of the atom. So just to put things in perspective, atoms have a diameter of about 1 times 10 to the negative 10th meters. This is about 0.1 nanometers. We also refer to it as an angstrom. And the nucleus is significantly smaller than that, about 1 times 10 to the negative 15 meters, or a femtometer. So these are extremely tiny. To put that in perspective, if the atoms inside your fist were about the size of a marble, your fist would be as big as the Earth is. And even though the, your fist is that big, you still would not be able to see the nucleus of the atom or the electrons with your naked eye, even when your fist is as large as the Earth.